Hey everyone, how's it going? It's that nerd Ryan here, and today for game review, we're going to be talking about Prey. Um, so this is a game from 2018, I believe. It is made by Alkaline or Alkane and uh, Bethesda, and this is basically, in my opinion, their attempt to make a Bioshock game or a System Shock game. I guess is more realistic. Um, I've never played System Shock, though, but I have played three Bioshock games. I reviewed the first one, um, working on making the second one and Infinite. But this game kind of has the same basics as that. Also, being made by the same company that made Dishonored, obviously it's going to have a lot of Bioshock influences, because so does Dishonored. Um... So, basically, the premise of the game is the trolley problem. Uh, spoilers. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so if you haven't played Prey yet, I am going to go instantly in spoilers by explaining this, so I do apologize. Although, this is actually a question at the beginning of the game. So, if for those of you who don't know who the trolley problem is, or what the trolley problem is, basically, you are trapped on a trolley, um, that is going down a rail. There are five t people that are attached to the rail, whether through like an evil guy or whatever circumstances, they're not moving off the rail. You have the chance to pull the lever on the trolley and switch it to a track, but you'll kill somebody that you know that's standing on that track. So do you pull the lever or not? So basically there's three outcomes to this game. Uh, one of them, funny enough, being jumping off the trolley. Uh, which is not supposed to be an option, which the game even tells you is not an option. Early in the game, about a third of the way through to even earlier, you can leave at any time by finding the escape pod key and going to the escape pod and leaving. However, you hear Alex's, your, your brother's voice. Sorry, I need to explain some stuff soon, but you hear somebody's voice saying, no, that's not right. Um, or you can create a, basically, a human EMP, or a organic EMP wave, destroying all of the enemies on the station, and saving the station and all the people on it. Or you can blow up the spa station, killing everybody, including your enemies, and save Earth. So it's kind of the, which is the greater good sort of thing. Saving yourself saving all everybody or saving just earth um so basically the story goes that you are morgan you uh and you are being tested on with your brother for your company on something called neuromods it is march 12th 2035 uh so you wake up get ready and everything take a nice helicopter to your brother's business and then go in, inject your neuromods, and start testing. I do want to go back and see if you can actually use the neuromods in the testing. I never actually, I didn't at the beginning. Like, one of the tests is hide in this room, so I grabbed a chair and hid in the chair, or hid behind the chair. I'm wondering if I could use the neuromod to transform into something to hide. Another one was jump across, or run across this and hit the button. So I jumped, I'm wondering if I could teleport. Uh, and like stuff like that. So I, you do that and then you take the trolley problem and you answer the questions and the person observing you goes to grab their coffee but their coffee mug was empty even though they just filled it. Right when that happens, a creature comes, out, it comes from the cup and attacks them. It changes from the cup and attacks them. And you black out and you wake up the next day March 15th, 2035. Um, so, you go through your normal routine that you did yesterday, March 15th, 2035, and open the door, and all hell is broken loose. There is a person working on the elevator that's dead. Um, the lights are flickering, everything like that. You take the wrench, and you break the window and jump out, into a staging area. So basically, your whole life has been, a, or your whole life recently has been an experiment 
Uh, so it is technically not March 15th, 2023, or 2035. It is a undisclosed time. You've been living the same day over and over. Uh, using these things called neuromods to test out powers. Whenever they are removed, you um, lose your memory up until the time that you implanted them. So that's why you're reliving that day. Now, neuromods are derived from these things called Typhons. Typhons are this non-sentient organic alien species um, that are now infecting this entire space station that you're living on. Yep, you're living on a space station. Uh, so you are talked to by somebody named January who you figure out is a past version of yourself downloaded onto a robot who's telling you that the only way to save the station is to blow it up. You then hear another one called December for a little bit, who's telling you that you can save it by using a different um, type of weapon called a null wave. Um, and then you also hear October, who tells you to escape. Uh, I followed January in this, which means that my whole point was to blow up the station. I, you also get a early choice where, uh, as you're going through, you have to free a prisoner. You could either kill them or free them, and if you free them, they'll let you go into the armory. Um, at this point in the game, I had really big trouble getting weapons, so I let him help me to the armory, and then I, after looking at his rap sheet, I killed him. He was, like, literally a trafficker and stuff like that, so I was like, I'm not going to let this guy live. I can't trust him, so I did that. Not knowing that every choice you make in this game, every small choice, impacts the ending. So technically, there are three major endings, but there's different factors to each of those endings. You could literally save the planet, or save the station and everything, but you literally killed everybody that you were trying to save, and you'd still not be considered good. Um, kind of like how Dishonored has the ending of if you go end the game without killing anybody, or if you end the game with killing three people, or if you end the game with no witnesses. Um, so that is something that I never factored in while playing this game until I got the ending spoiled, and then I just decided, you know what, I already went this far down my path, I'm gonna go even farther. <laughs> so... Throughout this, you have to fulfill missions of, like, putting or putting pieces together, trying to save people or kill people, which I did. Um, I will say there was a funny part in the game where I got to the cargo bay, and there was a bunch of survivors and a bunch of food. I was low on health, so I started eating all the food, and somebody made a comment that, hey, that's for everybody. So I turned around, took my wrench out, beat her, and then the entire station, <laughs> or the entire section went up against me, so I had to end them all. I think that was the point of, you know, no return. Um, so also, like I said, how this is like Bioshock, you also get uh, Neuromods that are basically plasmids. They can increase human qualities, or you can get Typhon quality, or like Typhon weapons. Uh, so I did get a few Typhon abilities, in this, and I did find them to be helpful, but we'll talk about that in the gameplay aspect. Uh, but anyway, so as you go through, you have to fight different types of Typhons, and hide from so hide or fight something called the Nightmare. I hid every time it showed up. I think it showed up about four times for me. Um, and there's a reason why for that I'll explain in a bit. But uh, yeah, you end up doing things for January or your brother or stuff like that, and then you finally end up meeting up with your brother. Uh, in that, he kind of reveals, like, what your guys' plan was and what was going on, and then this giant Typhon, known as the Apex, shows up and starts destroying the station. So you can either save or kill your brother at this point. I tried to save him, but anytime I opened a door, I couldn't carry him anymore, so he ended up dying. Uh, he was the only one that I was actually intentionally trying to save. But, uh, yeah. 
you also get invaded by like a mercenary right before that and you have the option to hit the like hypnotize him or um or rewrite his memories with taking out his neuromods or killing him because i killed the doctor already that was supposed to uh take out his neuromods i uh ended up killing him on the spot um but yeah so i did that um and then you talk to your brother, and then you find a way to either destroy the Apex or destroy the station, thus also destroying the Apex, which I did. And then the game ends, and then you get a cutscene where you realize that the whole thing was just a dream. The whole time you're a dream, it was a simulation simulating the trolley problem uh, on a whole different level. You do get hints of it through the game, uh, not to the extent of Black Ops 3, where Black Ops 3's campaign was terrible. I do think that it did implement the whole it's all a dream thing a little bit better, where it does hint at with people just being like, hey, you looking over here? Or, hey, are you still with us? Or like stuff like that. Where this one, you just get random blurts of you sitting in a chair and Alex standing over you, which is your brother, with operators. So it's kind of blatantly obvious after a while. Uh, even if I didn't get that spoiled to me, I'd be like, okay, so this is either a simulation or a dream or whatever. The big twist, though, is that you are actually a Typhon. Uh, Typhon human hybrid or something like that. And you're, they're trying to see if they can use you to create a peace between human and Typhon because the Typhons have destroyed the Earth. Uh, so, yeah. So let's talk about gameplay. I found this game kind of hard to the point of being annoying. I did play through it on easy at the beginning, and I ended up having to switch it to story, um, which is like beginner, basically. And maybe it's a skill issue. Maybe it's just I skipped over a tutorial or something. But I had a lot of issues finding health packs, finding ammo, basically finding anything. I would dig through and pick up anything and everything just to like make sure and I would use the recyclers, I would use everything. Recyclers are like when you throw junk in you get useful stuff and then you could use that useful stuff to build weapons and stuff or build whatever you need. I was having such a hard time finding anything useful. Um, and like I said, I would go through, I would do that and then like I would get 45 bullets and then by the point, for like the pistol, and then I'd get through a room and I'd have zero. Um, so yeah, it was very hard to ration out everything. I was approaching this like a Bioshock game, because I was explicitly told when I bought the game five years ago that it was basically Bioshock 4. So I had that mentality since I got the game. I just never got around to playing it. Then my friend played it and highly recommended it. Uh, so I decided to play it. And it would be very hard at certain points. I mean, using Neuromods was helpful. I mostly did human ones, but I would unlock like tier one Typhon abilities. So I did like the Psy Shock or whatever where you launch it and whatever's in that immediate vicinity gets hurt. I did a dash that I never used, and or that I used like once, but I wasn't using correctly. And a something called bounce back, which was like a shield that I used once, never really cared for it. So I mostly stuck to the side shock and then using my wrench because I would get ammo and then run out of ammo. Um, I also would use the glue gun. I felt like the glue gun was very, ex like, a very useful tool of making stairs, putting out fires, slowing down em enemies, but it wouldn't slow them down that long. I guess there's also a weapon called a Q-beam that I never got to use. There's also a disruptor that when I finally figured out how to use it, it was very useful until I ran out of ammo, um, which kind of stunk. But yeah, so it was very hard to defend yourself in this game. And I get it, it's kind of a survival horror, and you're supposed to ration out and everything. But I just had a problem rationing. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, it was very hard to fight anything. So let's talk about what we fight, which is the enemies. So Typhon come in a melody of different creatures who also have tiers of their abilities. So the weakest one and the first one you meet is the Mimic. This can transform into any inanimate object and then transform out and attack you at any given time. There's also greater Mimics, which do the exact same thing, but they have a little bit more health and a little bit different of attacks. Um, they go down three hits with the wrench for the regular and about eight hits with the wrench for the um, greater. I'm going to use wrench as a thing because that's what I used for most of this. Uh, you also have next is phantoms. Phantoms are the most diverse. They're also kind of the most common. So basic phantoms use the Psy shock that I used through a lot of it. They go down at about 10 hits with a wrench. And then there's the elemental ones, which you got the, um, like, etheric, which teleport around and also leave, like, this effigy sort of thing. Uh, then there's the thermal, which heat up and everything. Then there is the volca uh, voltatic, or voltaic, or whatever, which is electrical energy uh, that they launch at you. Those, I feel like, go down at about 15 hits with a wrench. They're also... I, there's a point in this where I had to use hit and run tactics um, and stuff like that to take out these. So it would take a half an hour to take down like a room of like Voltanic uh, phantoms. Next are the I kind of want to say phantom half phantoms called poltergeists. They disappear and then they uh, use like psychic energy to attack you and stuff. Then there is the Technopaths and the telepaths. Technopaths affect electronics. Uh, they use electronics to attack you, or they possess operators, which we'll get to in a second, to attack you. Then there is telepaths, which uh, possess humans to run at you and then blow up their heads, which also was a pretty good reason why I couldn't save anybody, uh, because I was not subtle. And the techno or telepaths would just have them rush me and attack. Um, and then you have the nightmare, or then you have like crystalloids and crystalloid nests and weavers. Weavers are like crystalloid nests. They move around, and then they send out crystalloids, and they also radiate. So you get radiation poisoning, uh, which we'll talk about the factors that you receive in a minute because I do want to talk about health and psi and stuff like that. Um, so, after that, you get the Nightmare. The Nightmare is a big, scary creature that chases you for three minutes. You either can fight or flight. Now, me being difficult to get weapons and to get health and stuff like that, I would usually end up hiding. Unfortunately, most of the time it's easy to hide from a Nightmare. The hard, hardest part was when I was in the reactor room because there's no small room to hide in. But if you find a office or something like that, you can literally crouch for three minutes and then play a game on your phone, uh, which is what I did most of the time. And then you're clear of the nightmare. And then the apex, you cannot fight, but it can attack you by moving its tendrils while you're trying to walk in a certain area or uh, spacewalk. So there's that. So let's talk about um, healing and stuff like that. So to heal, you get medical kits. You can also eat food. Uh, you also have to watch out for statuses like exertion, radiation poisoning, um, and suit damage because your suit also has health. I never understood how the suit worked with your health because it felt like I was losing health more than I was losing suit damage. But then when the suit would fail, it would make things a lot harder. Um, you can repair your suit with suit repair kits, and then your Psy, which is your, like, superpower stuff, you can use Psy Hypos to refill. Uh, you can also use Nero Mods to upgrade those, um, but every now and then it's hard to find medical kits or operators, which were other enemy types, by the way, as military operators or 
corrupted operators, which are just little robots that fly and shoot you with certain things. Medicals, when they're corrupted, they shoot you with electricity or they can heal you. Military just fires Q-beams at you, I believe, is probably what a Q-beam is, because I never found one. Um, and the engineer operators, which fix your suit, shoot fire at you. Um, you also get, like, a semi-special boss that's pretty easy. That is a informant operator that also fires at you. Or, shoots fire at you. So, um, yeah. Once you get the hang of fighting the different types, it does get a little easier, especially if you do research on them. Which is kind of like the camera in Bioshock. Um, but they still give you massive amounts of damage. Even in story, some of them give you massive amounts. So, like I said, I did have to switch the difficulty on this, and it was still difficult. Um, so I gotta say, with this game, the story's amazing. I just felt like the gameplay was very hard. So I am gonna give this game a 7 out of 10. Um... Just really quickly, I'm not even going to cover weapons because, like I said, I really only got to use the wrench because I would get bullets for stuff and then immediately run out. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and follow me on all my social media down below. It's that nerd Ryan, signing off.